It's always a great time when we have Trevor Maddich joining us on the program, and he joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Trevor, it's been a while since we had you on the show. What have you been up to? Jason, I've been laying low. I've been relaxing. I've been taking a nap, and, uh, and then after the nap, I took another nap. Uh, the season is a blur, so it's nice to be able to relax for a while. Let me tell you, when you can master the art of the nap, you know you are ahead of the game. There is nothing better than a good nap. And with everything that you do during the college football season, I'm sure you certainly earned it after just a crazy year last year. But at least for BYU fans, it was, uh, it was an exciting year. And it, it led into an unbelievable offseason, one that we have not seen in a very, very long time, Trevor. It was the worst-kept secret that Zach Wilson was going to be the number two overall pick to the New York Jets. But now that it is official and you've had time to digest that, what do you think of the fit and his future in New York? I think Zach's a great fit for the Jets. And partly it's because of what they're doing around him. They have brought in a bunch of young playmakers in this draft that can grow together with Zach. One of them is Ole Miss wide receiver Elijah Moore. He is seen as a slot receiver, but that's not really fair because he runs in the four threes. And at Ole Miss, he was able to get behind some of the best defensive backs in the nation, including from Alabama and LSU. So he's got the slot skills and the deep skills and the elite speed. They brought in Michael Carter, a running back who's not just an outstanding runner, but an outstanding receiver out of the backfield. And they both bolstered the offensive line for him. And what really impresses me, Jason, is how when each of those guys was drafted, Zach got on the phone with them or texted them immediately and welcomed them to the Jets and said, let's do this thing. And what that does is it creates an immediate environment of togetherness and an esprit de corps among those young players coming in as the guys that are going to carry this franchise back to glory. And when you set it up that way, you create a, a brotherhood that wouldn't have been created the same way otherwise. So I think Zach Wilson, with all of his skills, coming into a situation where they're bringing in young talent with him, the best thing that he did was to develop that talent into a unit mentally and emotionally before they even met each other. Well, and, and I think that's great. And, and we've seen that at BYU. I mean, this guy is a leader. And I, I we're all excited to see what he can do with the Jets and in the National Football League. You know, one of the biggest questions in terms of going to New York was, well, New York historically has not done very well. And they, they haven't won in a really, really long time. We have talked on this show a lot about we like the fact that Robert Sala is coming in and he seems – First-year head coach, we understand that. They're going to have a first-year offensive coordinator. But I like the guys that they have in place. Because of a new starting quarterback, a new head coach, a new offensive coordinator, how tempered should expectations be for year one? Quite tempered. In other words, I wouldn't begin to judge this draft class, including Zach Wilson for the Jets, until two and maybe even three years from now because of what's happening with the division around them, the AFC East. Buffalo is a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Miami got a lot better in the last couple of years with draft and free agency. And their quarter to a the quarterback to a Tonga Bailoa now has got those rookie jitters behind him, and he's now the man. New England, all of a sudden, for goodness sake, is going to take a huge jump. They had a poor season last year, but they had around eight guys opt out because of COVID. And so they were very active in free agency. They had a really good draft, and those guys are back in now. And I think the personnel of New England will take a quantum leap over what they had last year. And then the Jets need to compete with all those teams that are ahead of them in the race to improve. So I think the Jets will improve. I think they will become competitive. But I would not judge them too soon. BYU had five guys drafted. And then after the draft, seven players signed free agent deals. Of all of the situations that BYU Cougars find themselves in right now, who do you think found the best situation? You know, there's a couple of undrafted free agents that I think have a great opportunity. One is Matt Bushman, tight end, signing with the Raiders. He would have been uh, probably day two draft choice. That means second or third round had it not been for the injury. But coming out now on the heels of that injury, what he's doing is allowing himself to have an a undrafted free agent contract while he gets back up to speed, and then he expects to have that second contract come home. And that's what he's doing. And so he will bring so much more playmaking ability than most undrafted free agents could ever hope to bring to the Raiders. And then Chandon Heron with the Titans. This is a fascinating pick for me because the Titans need a, a right tackle. 
desperately. Herring has played right tackle. He's more of a guard, I think, in the NFL. But the reason they say, the scouts say, that he's not really an NFL tackle is because even though he's very tall, he doesn't have elite length in his arms. Well, the thing that he does have is good feet. And when you don't have long arms on the edge, you fix that with your feet. If you stay in front of the guy, you don't have to reach out for the guy as much to keep him from going around you. So Herring has got the size, the toughness, the physical freaky nature of just looks like a Viking for goodness sake. And the guy I think has an opportunity to be a, a good swing guard for them, maybe even a starter and possibly as a swing tackle, he could step into that right tackle spot and have an opportunity to start going forward. I think it's just a really interesting opportunity for him. Because you obviously know the Washington football team quite well, I'm curious your impressions or what you think of them drafting Dax Milne in the seventh round. I think Dax Milne has a chance to have a really good NFL career because he's very smart. He's a great route runner. He fights for that football. He finishes, whether it's short or deep passes. The reason he went in the seventh round instead of higher is because NFL scouts didn't see elite physical traits, doesn't have necessarily elite speed or height or something like that. But he's elite when it comes to playing the game of football. And so I think he has a really good chance to be a very valuable player, probably in the slot, go deep sometimes in the league because teams won't expect him to do that because they'll look at the numbers. But what they will be surprised at is how he gets all of his speed onto the field, unlike some guys who run faster on the track. At Washington, the issue with Dax is that that's a really deep receiver room. They added some free agents, and it'll make it kind of hard to catch on to the bottom of that roster. That doesn't mean he can't or he won't. But I do think that whether it's practice squad or whether it's catch on to the bottom of this or some other roster, Dax Milne will have a much better NFL career than people give him credit for who did not watch him play all year. Talking with Cougar great Trevor Maddich here on BYU Sports Nation. This is a really fun time to watch BYU players in the National Football League. And whether it's guys like Kyle Van Oy or Daniel Sorensen, you know, winning Super Bowls or Fred Warner playing in a Super Bowl, Taysom Hill being in the conversation. There's just so many different storylines featuring BYU players. In your opinion, of all the guys that are in the NFL that have BYU ties, who is the most prominent Cougar in the league right now? Well, if you say prominent, I think it's Taysom Hill for the Saints. He, for the last several years, has been one of the most fun guys to watch in the entire league and one of the most respected guys in the entire league. I mean, he came in as a quarterback who then began covering kickoffs and then did all kinds of things that big H-backs will do sometimes. I mean, this is a, a guy who will do anything for the team with a smile on his face, and that's the fun part of it. It's not just that Taysom is a unique, versatile athlete. It's that there's this childlike joy of playing the game and being around his teammates that show up whenever the camera's on him. And that's part of the fun of the audience watching him. So people don't know, or if people don't know that he's from BYU, they want to find out where he's from because they see this guy that's so joyful all the time. And now he has an opportunity to earn the starting job as a quarterback competing with Jameis Winston there now that Drew Brees is retired. So he's got a chance to actually elevate his profile from there. But from a standpoint of prominence, it's not just how well you play or where you play. It's how you connect with people. And I don't think Taysom is trying to connect with the NFL audience. I think he's trying to play the game as best he can for his team. But in doing so, he connects with the NFL audience because of that smile and that joyfulness. Yeah, see, my answer was Fred Warner simply because he's on a team that's expected to contend now that everybody's healthy. You know, worry about their quarterback situation, you know, when we get to the season. But, you know, he's widely viewed as the best linebacker in the National Football League, and you're on a team like that. So that's why I went with Fred Warner, but I can certainly understand the reasoning and the rationale for Taysom Hill. When it's all said and done, Trevor, how do you think that plays out in New Orleans? Because we obviously all want to see Taysom Hill get a shot as a starting quarterback in the National Football League. There does seem to be a little more momentum, and maybe it's just perception, that, that maybe Jameis has more of a chance than, than what we originally thought he did. Taysom does have a good chance to start, although Jameis Winston is incredibly talented. The only thing that really stands between Taysom and that starting job is the final steps of tightening up his accuracy a little bit more because the windows he'll have to fit it into are super tight. And in that offense, you're required to have not just the knowledge of where to throw it and when to get it there, 
but then it's got to get there in a, in a really tight window. And he is working this off season on pure quarterback workouts. In other words, in the past, he's worked on quarterback. He's worked on other stuff for physical strength. Now he's working on being a quarterback. That includes the drills that he's doing. And I think he's got the talent to do it. And as long as he can tighten that up, he has a chance to be the successor of Drew Brees, which is an amazing thing. Trevor, I certainly don't want to put words in your mouth, but I have a feeling I know where you're probably going to go with this. Yesterday on the show, Spencer and I were talking about the golden age of BYU players in the NFL, and there are so many guys right now, 27 guys currently either on NFL teams with contracts or in mini camps or invites or whatever, so 27 guys. But is this the golden era of BYU football? Or is it the 80s with Jim McMahon and everything that happened there? Or is it the 90s with Steve Young? We settled on, or at least I did, that right now, and I understand everything that happened prior to, because of the sheer number and the storylines surrounding them, I said right now is the golden era for BYU players in the NFL. Where do you fall in that argument? How great is it that we're having this debate? Yes. Which decade among many is the golden era of Cougars in the NFL? And you know who's also listening to this debate is recruits. I mean, what a great thing for Kalani Sataki to be able to tell recruits that look at how we put people into the NFL. If you want to play in the league, you can come here. And we are also a pathway to the next level, which is great. Uh, I think if you talk about numbers, you're talking about now because of what you mentioned. And I think when it comes to actual golden age, now there needs to be accomplishment. There needs to be finished. Jim McMahon won the Super Bowl. He was one of the biggest stars at the most glamorous position. Steve Young was, he put together a Hall of Fame career with the 49ers and did things with his arm that even Joe Montana didn't do. A lot of people thought Steve Young's career was mostly a running quarterback who threw a little. Mm -hmm. He was better than Montana at certain things, throwing the ball and more accomplished in some ways. And he won multiple Super Bowls. So you've got those guys finishing at the grammar positions at the top. That's why I think to really finish it for this to be the golden era of BYU football in the NFL, Zach Wilson, needs to succeed at the highest level. He needs to compete for Super Bowls. And if he wins a Super Bowl, then certainly that will be the, the crown on top of all those numbers that you talked about, going with Fred Warner of the 49ers and Dan Sorensen of the Chiefs and so many others. Taysom Hill, uh, who has a chance to do some great things, whether as a starter or as a role player, continuing forward at the highest level in New Orleans. These are things that would make this the golden era. But it's all on Zach Wilson, not to give him that much more pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's no, there's no more pressure that he needs right now. Right? He's just in the number one media market. He's the number two overall pick. Trevor, great stuff as always. It is so much fun to have you on. Since it had been a while, we got to cover a lot of stuff. Just great stuff, and it's always good to talk to you. Thank you, Jason.